guys, it's Mrs. Tucker. I think in class we left off today on our surface area review with number 10. So let's start with number 10. Everybody got up to number 10 in class. 10 says an architect plans to build a glass pyramid for an art exhibit. The pyramid will have a square base that's eight yards and a slant height that will be 10 yards. How much glass will be needed to construct the pyramid if only the sides are glass. If they say only the sides are glass and we want to know how much glass, then what are they asking us to calculate? Lateral surface area or total surface area? Yeah, that's going to be lateral surface area. So now I need a formula. I'm going to look on my formula chart. It says this. But taking half of a number is the same as dividing by two. So I'm going to take perimeter of the base, multiply by the slant height, divide by two. Let's calculate the perimeter of the base. If it's eight yards this way, and it didn't tell, oh, it does. It says this, it's got a square base. So that's going to be eight plus eight plus eight plus eight. Or you could say eight times four, which is 32. My slant height is this outside height right here. That's 10. So I'm going to take 32, multiply by 10, and divide by 2. 32 times 10 is 320. We're going to divide that by 2. 320 divided by 2. You get what? 160, my units are going to be yards squared. Is that in your answer bank? Yeah? OK, great. We're ready for number 11. Jenny wants to store her soup in a cylindrical container and completely cover it with aluminum foil. Approximately how many square centimeters of foil will she need? What are they asking me to calculate? Volume or surface area? How do you know it's surface area? For one thing, I see this word cover. If they were wanting volume, it would say how much did it take to fill it up or how much would it hold, but coverings on the outside. And then it also says set, uh, square centimeters. Square centimeters is a measure of area, so I know they're cal they want us to calculate surface area. Now, do they want lateral surface area or total surface area? How do you know it's total? Because they said completely. They want to completely cover it. So I've got a cylinder, and I want total surface area. Total surface area of cylinder. I need a formula. Look on your formula chart. What does it say? 2 pi RH, that's your lateral piece, plus what? Plus, you know, I don't know if your formula chart should say this. Thank you, ma'am. Two, two, two times the area of the base, or if the, star, if the star formula charts will say 2 pi R squared. It probably, I don't know which one it says. But that's your formula. Did they tell us what to use for pi? Use 3 for pi. Do we have a radius? Yeah, it's 10 centimeters. Do we have a height? Our height is 20. So let's just start plugging numbers in. 2 times 3. Our radius is 10. Our height's 20 plus 2 times 3 pi, we're using 3 for pi this time, and our radius squared. Radius is 10, 10 squared. Now it just comes down to uh, computation. Let's see, this piece right here is 200. This piece right here is 6. What's 6 times 200? Over here, the first thing you're going to do is square your 10. You always have to do your exponents first before you multiply. What's 10 times 10? 
Uh, two times three is six. Six times 100 is 600. Add those together and you get what? 1,800 centimeters squared. Is that number in your answer bank? Okay, we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. Ready for the next one? All right. Uh, for small paving jobs, whoops, what did I do here? For small paving jobs, a contractor uses a roller pushed by a worker. To the nearest square inch, what is the area of the pavement with which the surface of the roller will come into contact in one complete rotation? Will the ends of the cylinder touch the pavement? Will the ends touch the pavement? No. So, so we can't include the circles. We're not going to do that. Will the, this piece in here touch the pavement? Okay, so are we calculating total surface area or lateral surface area? Yep, that's going to be lateral surface area of what shape? Of a cylinder. So I need a formula for lateral surface area of a cylinder. On my formula chart, it says that. What they want us to use for pi? 2 times 3.14. What's my radius? 10. Even though it's laying down on its side, what's the height of my cylinder? 30. There you go. I'm going to multiply those two pieces. I get 6.28. When I multiply those two together, I get 300. 300 multiplied by 6.28. I'm going to pause the video here while you guys do that. You can pause the video too. Did you get uh, 1,884 inches squared? Is it in the answer bank? Okay, great. Number 13 says, Jonathan shipped a birthday gift to his grandmother in a cubicle box. Determine the surface area of the box. Well, this box is three by three by three. And you guys got to be careful because it's real tempting to take three times three times three. It's real tempting to do that. But if you take length times width times height, you didn't calculate surface area. You just calculated what? Volume. You're right. It's real tempting on this kind of question to do that, so be very careful. They want you to determine the surface area of the box. So my next question is, do they want lateral surface area or do they want total? They want total. If they wanted lateral surface area, they would have said lateral surface area. Or they would have said, what's the area of the sides of the box only? If they don't say that, they want total surface area. Okay, so I want total surface area of a, what's, what's this shape? It's a prism. Yeah, it's, it's a cube, but on our formula chart, it, it's going to be a prism. So I'm going to go to my formula chart, and I'm going to look for a formula, and it says what? pH plus... 2 capital B, P being the perimeter of the base, this being the height, and capital B is area of the base, and there's two of them. But you know what? It's, I think with a cube it's really much easier just to calculate the area of one of the rectangles and then do what? Times it by 6, that's exactly right. Since it's a cube, all of the surfaces have the same size, so let's calculate the area of one of the faces and then multiply by six. Well, this is three by three. So this front face has an area of what? Three times three? Nine. Nine times how many fa identi identical faces on a cube? Six. Nine times six is 54 feet squared. Is that in your answer bank? Super. OK, 
Okay. Uh, you know what? This is a volume question. And I should have taken that off because I'm not going to be asking you guys any volume questions on the surface area test. Surface area t test tomorrow is only going to have 10 questions. So they're going to be 10 points each. It's just going to be surface area. You guys can go ahead and calculate this one if you want to, and the answer is going to be in the answer bank, but I'm going to postpone that for now. Let's go on. It says calculate the total surface area, round to the nearest tenth if necessary, use three for pi. Name the shape. Yeah, if you can't name the shape, how can you possibly get the right formula off the formula chart? Okay, they want total surface area, so I'm going to look at my formula chart, and I find a formula that says what? 2 pi RH, that's your lateral surface area, plus what? 2 pi radius squared. This piece right here is the area of the base, so 2 times the base, and we'll have total surface area. Okay, here's our radius, 3.7. Our height is 9.9. .9. We're going to use 3 for pi. Can I give you guys a little hint? little hint. If this is a multiple choice question, and I think tomorrow it probably will be, one of the things that you can do to maybe eliminate some answer choices that wouldn't be correct, you know, we could get lost in our decimals here because our computation skills might be off a little bit. I could round that to what? That, I could round that to 10, and 3.7 I could round to what? 4. I could try doing that. I could take... Right here I'm using 3 for pi. 2 times 3 times a radius of 4 times a height of 10 plus 2 times 3 times my radius of 4 squared. 4 squared is what? You know you have to do your exponent first. 16 times 6. And then over here I've got, well, that's 6. That right there is 40. What's 6 times 40? 240 plus, now I've got to take 16 times 6. Ninety-six, add those two together and you get what? 240, add on that's 6. Did you get 336? Now, is that answer going to be bigger than the actual answer or smaller than the actual answer? That's going to be bigger. Because I rounded this one up and I rounded this one up, this answer is going to be bigger than the actual answer. So if you had, you know, an answer choice A that said 500, you could eliminate it. If answer choice B was 750, you could eliminate it. Okay? You could, eat, you could also use that method and round down and sometimes kind of backdoor into what the actual answer is if you don't want to mess with the decimals. It's a great way not to make a computation error. So before I actually go back and put in my numbers, I'm going to ask you guys, go into your answer bank, and is there an answer in there that's smaller than that, kind of in that range, maybe about 290, 280, 300, somewhere in there? You found what? What did you find in your um, answer bank? Oh, you don't have an answer bank. Your teacher's way, way more meaner than me, huh? You found what? 301.9. 301.9. We'll tell you what, let's go back and do this. Let's see, let's change my radius right here. Let's make it what it should be. And the height, let's make that what it should be. The radius was supposed to be 3.7. The height was supposed to be 9.9. .9. Let's put in a 3.7 there. And I'm going to pause the video while we actually calculate the real number. And we'll compare. I hope it's that 301.9. So I'm going to pause the video here a minute. Okay, so y'all know by hand, I actually did calculate 
this number right here, the 219.78 for my lateral surface area. And then for my two bases, I got 82.14. And when you add those together, guess what you get? Hey, how'd you like my little method of estimating there? Got us kind of close, didn't it? That's a great way to, you know, maybe attempt a problem when you're dealing with decimals. Because I see a lot of kids make decimal errors on our computation tests. That's a great way maybe not to, maybe to avoid that. You got us pretty close. Okay, let's look at the next question. The following box is being covered with wrapping paper. How many square inches of wrapping paper will be needed to cover the box? Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Name the shape. Yep, it's a prism. And on your formula chart, that's all it says is prism. Uh, are we calculating total surface area or lateral? How many square inches of wrapping paper will be needed to cover the box? Total. Yep, it's total. So if I look at my formula chart, it says this. Perimeter of the base times the height time plus two bases. If you want to do that, that's fine. I know some people like to just go ahead and calculate the area of each of the six rectangles and add those all up. You can do that also, whichever you, way you want to do it. Maybe we should practice with the formula because when you guys get to the star test, I'm, I'm thinking you might forget. Well, it's just the area of all the, the rectangles added up. You know, you might kind of like look at the formula chart and see that and Okay, what does the P mean? What does the H mean? What does the capital B mean? We're going to do the formula just in case. I personally think it's easier just to do all the area of the rectangles and add them all up. What does capital P stand for? Okay, so it's 13 plus 9. What's 13 plus 9? Twenty-two. Isn't the back side also going to be 13 plus 9? That's another 22. What's the perimeter of our base? Yeah, 44. That was pretty easy. What's the height of our prism? 7. 2 times the area of our base. How are you going to get the area of the base? Yeah, 13 times 9. Length times width. Man, if you can get that set up, that's the hard part. Now we're just calculating. 44 times 7. 28, 29, 30. Let's see. I'm going to do 8 times 9 first. That's 18. And then I'm going to take 18 times 13. Because it doesn't matter what order you multiply in, you still get the same answer. Let's see, that's 24, that's 3, 4, 5, that's 8 and 1. Did you guys get 234? Last step, take your lateral surface area and add it to your two bases. So let's add those together. I think it's 642 inches squared. Oh, you're right. It's 500. Oh, my gosh. I was just checking you. Is that in your answer bank? You know what I think the hardest part about all of this is? It's really hard for me to wrap my brain around 542 of these little squares that measure an inch by an inch. You know, you're calculating a number, and you don't really know if it's correct. And I think that's the hardest part about this whole volume and surface area thing. It just depends upon what size your units are. You know, they could be using yards squared. But if you're calculating volume of, let's say, gravel or dirt being brought out to your house, that's in yards cubed. It's so hard to wrap your brain around the size of the 
of the unit that we're measuring in. And I think that's what makes measurements so difficult. That's it. I think I... Oh, buses? I think we have one more question. Calculate the total surface area. Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Name the shape. Yeah. They usually call it a rectangular pyramid, but more specifically, if you look at the base, I would call it a square pyramid. Okay. I want total surface area. Total surface area formula says, I think on your formula chart it says this, that funky L plus B. But I told my kids taking half of a number is the same as doing what? Yeah, dividing by two. All right. Capital B stands for what? Area of the base. The base is a square. It's... 8.6 by 8.6. Gosh dang, wouldn't it be nice if that was a 9? Because 9 times 9 is what? I'm going to put my estimate over here. My estimate for B is 81 feet squared. I need perimeter of the base. And if I'm just estimating, isn't it 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9? I'm just est This is my estimate here. Or 9 times 4, which is what? 36. My slant height is what? Eh, let's call it 13. Because we're just estimating. Because I hate those decimals. I might get mixed up because I drop decimals sometimes. If you don't believe it, ask my students. They're all looking at me weird now. They're a math teacher. Okay, let's take 36. Multiply by the slant height, divide by 2, and add the area of our base. And then we're going to go look and see if we can find something that looks like that in our answer bank. Okay? I know 36 divided by 2 is 18. I'm going to take 18 times 13. You guys go ahead and multiply this out and divide by 2. Okay, well, I was talking and I ran out of film there and I wasn't watching what I was doing. So anyway, let me finish up my estimate. My estimate, rounding my numbers up, I got 315 uh, square feet. And that could be enough to eliminate two or three answer choices for you. So while we were waiting for my video to upload, I went back and put the real numbers back into this formula. So we did the perimeter of the base, 8.6 plus 8.6 plus 8.6 plus 8.6, or actually took 8.6 times 4. And you got 34.4. My slant height is actually what? 12.8. So I'm going to put that in. My perimeter or my area of my base, my capital B, is 8.6 multiplied by 8.6 to get the area of the base. <clears throat> and I got 73.96. Let's put it all together in our formula now. Perimeter of the base, multiply by the slant height, divide by 2, and add 73.96, the area of our base. You guys uh, calculate that out. Don't write down my answer. I got 294.12 feet squared. What was my estimate? There's my estimate, and there's the actual answer. Those are pretty close to one another, aren't they? They're real close. What a great way to, you know, try to get an answer and not make any computation errors. By the way, is that answer in your answer bank? Excellent. I think we're done with the review. All right. I want you guys to, um, I want you all to get A's tomorrow on your test, okay? See you tomorrow.